All right, welcome to Gardening with Heidi. Today we're going to talk about a little bit of the soil basics and transplanting plants from a pot that you might get from your local garden center into a container in your home. Um, you can buy pre-bought uh, potting mix or you can make your own. So today we're just going to talk about a little bit about each of these elements and what they do and what they are. So um, one of the first things we're going to look at is vermiculite. Vermiculite is super light and airy and it helps with drainage in your plant. So um, this one you will find in a potting mix or you can add it in. Uh, it's, you can find it at Home Depot or any of your local garden centers. The next one is perlite. It's that white, looks like, kind of like popcorn. It's really light and fluffy. And whenever you've seen some potty mixes and you see those white chunks in there, uh, it's called perlite. And it's, it's a mineral that, uh, like a volcanic mineral, I think that it's, it's under high heat, it explodes and it creates this. So there's a lot of surface area on that and it just helps with drainage and things like that. Um, another, really good thing that you can actually make at home with your garden scraps or your food scraps is worm castings. This is what worm castings look like. Um, it's safe to touch, um, you know, oops. Uh, anyway, these, this is good to uh, put on the top after you pot it just to kind of boost some nutrients in for your plants. And then there's gonna be one that we're gonna talk about that a lot of people don't even know about. So I'm hoping that this is something that you've never heard of and I'm opening your eyes to a whole new uh, wonderful world of gardening that you can incorporate into your soil, which is amazing. And it's called biochar. And this is biochar right here. Biochar is basically pure carbon. And you use any plant material uh, that is burned at high heat with low oxygen. There's a specific method on that and we will be doing a video of that in the future. So if you want to see a biochar, how to make your own biochar video, please post that in the comments. But what this, this product does is it allows for nutrients to stay in the soil. Here in Southwest Florida, we have a lot of sand. So anything, any fertilizer you put on the soil will just drain right through and then it goes into our water systems. So that is a problem. So biochar actually is like a plethora of little tiny uh, housing units. I mean, we're talking the square footage of the surface area of one of these little pieces is tremendous. And so what happens is, is all of the beneficial uh, microbes that live in the soil that help transfer nutrients from roots to the plant from the soil can live in here and hold those nutrients. So all those like nitrogen and phosphorus and potassium and all those things that are in the soil, this, these, the little microbes that live in this can hold it so that it can be up taken from the plant. So this is a really amazing plant, uh, soil amendment. Um, now you don't just use it by itself, you wanna charge it. So there's something called charging. We're gonna go into that in the other video, but I do wanna show you what, you what they look like on the shelves if you were gonna to go to Home Depot or your local garden center, um, you know, or a small nursery, you know, it's good to support your local garden center or nursery where people are, you know, working with plants and whatever. But if you don't have one of those locally, Home Depot does carry some of these products as well. So let's just take a quick look. So this is what that biochar came in, and I got this at the Edison State, uh, or the Edison Estates. Um, it's a, like I said, it's a soil conditioner. Uh, this bag was $11, so you can tell it's, uh, it's not cheap, uh, but a little does go a long way. And there is a calculation, and I'll probably, I'll put those in the notes as far as like how much you would use for that. Um, but this is basically pure carbon. Um, from any plant material. Uh, bamboo makes great biochar, by the way. This is the biochar uh, that's being charged. So uh, what you can put in there is um, manure, like a manure compost tea, um, something that has already passed through an animal or um, 
that has the natural microbes that would be inside the intestines or in a compost pile. I put a little bit of vermicule or I put a little bit of uh, worm castings in here and um, some actual urine in here and that helps just uh, charge this to create a microcosms of microbes that will live in there and be in the soil to capture those nutrients. Vermiculite. So this bag right here, huge bag, super light. I mean, this is like this is like 10 pounds maybe, you know, like this, this is really light. It's amazing. So this is one, this one's not going to break your back putting it in your truck. Uh, anyway, um, the, this again, as you can say, it, it improves the moisture and nutrient um, retention as well. So if you can't get uh, the biochar, this is where the vermiculite can help you and this is a little bit more easy to find. Now, we're going to just talk about the things to make your own. So here's the perlite. This improves the drainage, you can see, and aeration and potting mixes. Um, you don't necessarily use this in, like, if you're doing a raised bed or in the ground itself because uh, you just don't. This is mainly for pots that are contained that need a lot of drainage so the roots don't rot if you have a lot of rain or if, you know, just to allow for aeration and good drainage in pots because a lot of plants are very finicky. So, earthworm casting. So you can find these as well um, in your preferred garden center um, or you can make them. Uh, I have never had a worm vermiculture farm. I know how to do it. I haven't done it yet and uh, we might be doing that in the future. So if you'd like to see that or if you have some experience in that, uh, let me know. Leave, leave a comment in the comment. Peat moss. We've talked about peat moss a little bit before. Um, this bag's pretty heavy so you might need some help getting that in your truck if you have a bad back or something. Um, this is just great. It's really light, fluffy material. Uh, this specific one comes from Canada and it's just broken down um, sphagnum peat moss and uh, it's real light, holds water, uh, so it's just it's a great medium to use for potting soil. Um, and then if, so these are the items you're going to use if you're going to make your own, correct, you know? Uh, and then you're going to want to get some cow manure and some compost in there because these have the nutrients inside of the, the material that's going to provide the nutrition that your plants are going to need. These other things are um, conditioners for the soil, so it has a great environment. This actually has the nutrients as well as the, uh, um, the earth, the, uh, Worm castings have a little bit of nutrition as well. So we're going to mix our own, and I'm going to show you how to do that in case if you don't want to buy the higher priced um, pre-mixed potting soils. I'm going to do a hybrid of adding all of it together because I have some pretty big pots today, and I didn't want to buy pre-mixed. For all of them, I, can, I, can, I know how to make my own, and I'm going to hopefully you'll learn too how to make your own so that you can um, have healthy pots in your garden. All right, so a few recommendations for mixing soil. I prefer to have a wheelbarrow if you have one, that's great. Um, a good shovel, some gloves are good, keep your hands clean. Uh, and then either a, a razor blade knife or I just have a scissor, a simple scissors right here to open some of these bags that are brand new. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna start with this manure on the bottom. Um, like I said, I have some big pots. So I, I assume that I'm going to be using all of this. So I'm going to start with the heaviest uh, material first, which is this cow manure, and I'm just going to put it on the bottom. So you can just cut, cut the bag like that. This is kind of what it looks like. There are some sticks and things in there. That's part of the compost. So you get all that in there. All right, so we're gonna try to shoot for a third, a third, and a third. Um, however, I know my perlite, uh, I don't have a third of that, so that's all right. I'm gonna just pour a bunch of that in there. We'll see, I might save a little bit for another project, we'll see. Cause I am gonna put some actual uh, standard peat moss in there as well, or potting mix. Um, vermiculite. So this is real nice and light and airy, so uh, we'll get some of this in there. All right. 
you know, you can be like a chemist and really like measure everything out. Um, I kind of just do it by eye. So uh, you can also do little tests with water after you get it mixed, but you can kind of tell what it looks like after you've done this a while. And this potting mix is going to be used for my lemongrass and they actually like a lot of water so um, they don't need like a lot of drainage but let's say if you had a um, like a cactus or something like that you're definitely not going to want to have a lot of soil in there so they like a lot of drainage they don't like to be sitting in water Okay, so now I have the uh, compost, the perlite, and the vermiculite in there. Um, I also have some native soil that I uh, grabbed that has some natural stuff in it here. It um, has some sand. It has the little microbials from, from roots and plants that have been actually growing in the ground. So there's some, some life in here that I'm going to add into my mix here as well, uh, being that I'm going to be doing lemongrass. It's not that finicky of a plant, so I can add some of this in here. And again, we're from Florida, so it's not like I'm adding a bucket of clay in here and causing a big problem. So this is like sandy, you know, partially loamy soil. And let's see, what do we got in here? Okay, I got a little grub. So if you want to know what a grub looks like, that is a grub. And you definitely do not want them in your yard. They will eat all the little roots on your grass. But anyway, it fits, like I said, there's, there's, you know, living things in here, which is going to help, help create that soil environment. The soil is, you know, it's a living, there's living things going on in the soil. You need a healthy soil environment for plants to be able to get uh, the nutrient transfer and the healthy, healthy growth that they need. So. This, again, for me, was just adding biomass, adding some mass to this. I didn't have to pay for that. So that is going to help me fill my pots for a little bit cheaper by using what is around me in, in, in its natural environment. So we're getting there. Still looks pretty light. So we are going to put some of that peat moss in there next. Okay. Okay, so... After turning this soil around and going to get my pots, I came back and noticed there were two more of these little guys in this soil. So, this soil I had gathered a long time ago, actually, and I just let it sit in there, so they've probably had enough time to grow. So you want to make sure you take a good look at your soil that you're adding. Now, I obviously don't want to add these guys into the plants that I'm growing, because you know, they'll, they'll probably eat my lemongrass roots. Although lemongrass uh, is like, a lot of people, they don't like it because it's, it's got some microbials in there. So these guys, I don't want in my yard, obviously. So we will save um, their future for no, the non-viewing eye, but these guys aren't going to be allowed in my pots or in my soil. So I'm just going to set them over here for now. Okay, so now we're gonna put in some of this peat moss. Remember, this is that really light, fluffy material. Now, just be careful with this. One, this bag is heavy, and it's like powder. So, you don't wanna breathe it in, and you just wanna kinda add it. Now, I have a little tip with this. Don't leave this outside. Um, I left a bag outside and covered it thinking it'd be great, you know, I could cover it and then just keep the water off it. Well, guess what? <laughs> Carpenter ants found it. They, it's wood, right? So if you're gonna, you know, try to buy this stuff and use it all up, don't try to save it for another project, like just get it done and, and spread it around, you know, use it up, or you need to put it in a, uh, like a container that is sealed from moisture and from critters. And you can keep it, but I wouldn't just, roll up the bag because uh, cockroaches and other ants like it and stuff. So we're going to just see what, what that looks like. 
I know we said a third and a third and a third, but I'll just keep moving this around. Okay, so that would be how you could just make your own potting mix. Um, like I said, I have some several containers, so I'm actually going to incorporate this container into all of that as well, just to kind of give it a give it a good balance. This one's a little bit heavier than mine. You can kind of see theirs is a little bit darker. They probably have a little bit more compost in there, but you can still see the white. They don't have this, they don't have the peat moss in there so much, so um, we can add that more later. But I'm going to just add this in. This also has it's specially blended uh, to feed the plants up to nine months. So I'm not going to have to add any other fertilizer to this. Um, so we, we can, you can add some other things, other fertilizers um, as we go. And we'll talk about that in another application. But this is just going to help me fill and transplant all of my plants that I need to do today and kind of use up what I got and get a good variety and a good nice light pot mix for my plants today. So you want to make sure that you thoroughly mix all of those mediums together to get a nice equal balance. Um, and now I'm going to add a little bit of the... Um... <laughs> so you're going to want to make sure you mix everything up uh, very well so it all kind of gets a, a nice even mixture of everything and um, now I'm going to add a little bit of this uh, biochar into here. So this is going to help keep the nutrients in these pots and I'll leave, I'm, I'm just throwing it in. You don't need a lot of this stuff. Um, once this medium gets into the soil, it's there forever. This stuff doesn't break down. It's like building a concrete condominium for your microorganisms. So uh, once I get them in these pots, they'll be in there able to transfer nutrients. So I'm going to kind of mix a little bit in as we go. And then um, we're going to show some other transplanting with some um, lemongrass in the next video. So if you stick around, I'm going to show you how to, to do that. So make sure you mix it in, get all the way to the bottom, turn it up, keep gardening. If you like what you're seeing, hit that like button, subscribe. Um, but stay tuned because that lemongrass planting video is coming up next.